So what's the task at hand for Jeremy Sowers tonight? Well, he'll have to slow down one of the top offenses, if not the best offense in baseball. The Angels lead the league and average at 291. They've scored the most runs. They have the most hits. But they're only hitting eight 300 hitters in the lineup tonight. They ended <laughs> last night's game with nine 300 hitters in the lineup, and that's the first time since 1934 that that has happened after 100 games in the season. And you think about some of the great offenses we yes. witnessed here in this ballpark during the 90s. Sean Figgins looks at a ball down low, 79 degrees under partly cloudy skies here at Progressive Field. Figgins 0 for 3 last night. That doesn't happen very often. He leads the league in runs scored. And he's a better hitter from the left side of the plate, so that's a, a break. But for Jeremy Sowers, he wants to pitch ahead in the count to this lineup. He does not want to fall behind 2-0 where he has to groove one and then get a good swing at it. The left-hander's 2-1. Slap foul over to the right, and it evens the count. You know, you look at uh, Figgins, and from the left side of the plate, he's a 340 here to compare. He's 100 points better from the uh, left side of the plate than the right side. And the 2-2. Jammed him. Big hop for Peralta. Throws him out, one away. Always important to keep Sean Figgins off the bases. Well, he, he got him inside. Shopik was actually looking away, so he missed his target by a, a good 19 inches, 20 inches, because he was looking on the outside part, but he ran it in off the plate. It jams Figgins. He gets the ground to the third. But that's how he's going to have to pitch some of these right-handers. He's in on the hands. Bobby Abreu steps in. Two for five in last night's game. Abreu is tied for sixth in the American League with 80 runs batted in. Catches the outside corner to even the count at one and one. You know, when you looked at this game last night, a 5-4 ball game, you think pretty good game. There was 25 hits. 23 of those hits were singles by both clubs. Yeah. The only doubles in the game were from the bat of uh, Guerrero. 1-1 one, one pitch. Curveballs popped up. Peralta settling under it. Into foul territory. Two down. I don't know what to make of that, other than it's just one of those nights, because you think about even with the Indians lineup and all the changes it's gone through, it's it's been an offense that has thrived on the extra base hit, and you know the Angels have plenty of extra base pop. Just a weird night. Yeah. That's all. I mean, both teams had opportunity to score many more than what they did. It's just, you know, I guess sometimes you give credit to the pitchers when they get the outs when they had to. Well, and the bullpens definitely pitched well last night, as evidenced by the fact that the Indians' first 14 batters went 9 for 14. The Angels' first 18 batters were 8 for 16. Uh -huh. After that, the two lineups combined for eight hits in 46 at-bats. Foul tipped. It remains... Oh, there's the ball right there. He didn't okay. know. I didn't I'll know where it was at either. No, Rivera didn't know where it was at. It was sitting right down in front of Kelly Shopik. He checked the swing and went straight down. No balls, two strikes, two down here in the first. The 11th pitch of the first inning for Sowers. Up the middle, a hit off of Jeremy. Valbuena fields the carom, throws him out. One, two, three, go the Halos. A good first inning for Jeremy Sowers. Now as Drupal Cabrera riding a career-high 12-game hitting streak leads the drive.
Not to face Jared Weaver tonight. Grady Sizemore, Jamie Carroll as Drupal Cabrera. Chu Peralta Hafner, Kelly Schapa getting the start behind the plate tonight. Valbuena and Jimenez starting at first base, batting ninth. Indians Great. lineup brought to you by Progressive Insurance, proud to be the official auto insurance provider of the Cleveland Indians. Right-hander Jarrett Weaver making his 25th start. A nice record, 12-4. and four. One start against the Indians this year. It was a no decision. He, he threw okay. He, didn't, he wasn't uh, on top of his game. Didn't have that good slider that he can have. If he's locating that down in the way, it could be awfully tough on the hitters. He was basically fastball changeup. He walked three, struck out three in that game. Down low. Fastball hit on the ground a second. Howie Kendrick takes care of him, one away. Let's check out the Angels' defense, who have not made an error in the last five games or 52 consecutive innings. Rivera and left, Hunter and center, Abreu and right. Thickens at third, Ibar at short, Kendrick is at second tonight, Morales at first, and Napoli behind the plate. One down for Jamie Carroll, one for five in last night's game. And Weaver finds the outside corner for a called strike. Jared Weaver has had a number of starts this year and where he has just been mediocre. And then you sprinkle in a, a few clunkers. And that's where he's at right now with an ERA of over four. Well, he's pitching for a team you know they're going to score runs. And when he's on his game, he can do that. He can strike you out 140 strikeouts at 141 now in 153 innings. And right-handed hitters hitting just 195 off him. So he really, you know, he, he makes it tough on the righties. That little crossfire when he's locating that breaking ball, he moves his fastball in and out. He can be tough. After the start he had against us July 28th out in, in, in L.A., as you mentioned, he faced Minnesota and Texas, struck out 22 guys, 11 in each game. As Dribble Cabrera takes a strike. I mean, he had a stretch where he went eight straight starts and gave up a total of 10 runs in those eight starts. But then, immediately after that string was ended, he gave up six runs in five and a third innings, gave up seven runs in five and a third innings, and then really just averaged three, four, five, four, four. And then his last time out, gave up eight to Baltimore. So swung on and missed. He looks sharp tonight, though. He strikes out a pair in the first. Indians go in order. No score after one.
Airline, official airline of the Cleveland Indians, Continental Airlines, work hard, fly right. Buy McCafe coffees at McDonald's, all made to order with fresh ground espresso beans. And by All Care Dental Indentures, we make seeing the dentist easy. Scoreless as we go to the second inning. Each starting pitcher retires the side 1-2-3 to start the ball game. Vladimir Guerrero leads off the second with a long drive. Deep left center field. Grady Sizemore will make the catch. Middle of the track, one away. Well, let's have a look right now at the Altel text poll question of the game. Youngest player to reach 3,000 career hits. Was it Hank Aaron, Robin Young, Ty Cobb, or Pete Rose? Text your answer to 31962. And we'll have the results coming up later in the game. I like it. It's a good one. Torrey Hunter with one down steps in. Each team went down in order twice in last night's ball game. But so far here tonight, pitching looks good at the outset. Torrey Hunter, two for five last night. Swung on and missed, 0-2. Hunter looks like he's upset with himself. Might have chased a pitch out of the strike zone. Now the 0-2, almost chased after another high one, able to lay off one and two. Angels trail only New York in wins against left-handed pitching this year. They have 26, Yankees have 27. A year ago, they won 33 against Southpaws. Yes, he did. They appeal. He didn't go, says Angel Campos, the first base umpire, Shopik. Begs to differ with Daryl well, Cousins. The home it looked umpire. like it uh, to start that he did go. Oh, yeah. Oh, there's no question. That bat had out in front. He caught a break. That should have been a swing. Now the 2 2. And a bit too high, I guess. Full count. Boy, Torrey's getting a bunch of breaks here. Wow. I, I, I don't know. That wasn't high from that angle. And yeah, strike three call. Strike they finally six. got him. Yeah. <laughs> well, Two down. Well, he was going to walk the first base, but you can't get three breaks in one at bat, can you? I give Jeremy, Jeremy credit. Said, he kept going I, in there. Absolutely. I do. That's a good pitch. He brought it down a little bit, and there it was, another fastball. So he was finally gets Torrey Hunter, his first strikeout. And two down now for Mike Napoli. Napoli had a pair of hits last night, both singles. You can see why the Angels can be particularly tough for left-handed pitchers, though, because they have the bulk of their big boppers hit from the right side, and they've got a number of switch hitters. Pitch outside, 2-1. and one. But this Angels club has just been very consistent this year. Got off to a bit of a slow start, had some injury problems they've had to overcome, especially to their pitching staff. Not to mention losing Guerrero and Hunter for a stretch of time. They're hoping to get Joe Saunders back. Well, he struggled all year, too. He had a cortisone shot in the arm. And, and it's ball four, so Napoli draws a two-out walk, first base runner for the Angels. 
Save 70 to 81% off jewelry right now during the overstock sale at Alvin's, your Cleveland family jeweler, since 1931. Thousands of items, rings, earrings, pendants, diamonds, and gold, all up to 81% off. Find sale dates and locations at alvinsjewelers.com. Sowers has thrown four straight first pitch strikes, but he lost Napoli. Kendry Morales, another one of those good switch hitters for the Angels. Morales, like a lot of switch hitters, is better from the left side. Well, look at the numbers he's putting up this year, and you're hitting seventh in the lineup. I mean, that shows you how deep well, this lineup could be. He's two homers away from the uh, Chili Davis with 28 homers for a switch hitter for the record for the Angels. You're right, but, you know, because I thought that same thing, you know, 79 ribbies, and he's batting seventh. But when you look at what he's done right-handed, three homers, 18 runs batted in, and only a 267 average. Most of his damage has been done as a left-handed hitter. Weak ground ball hit to short. Cabrera goes to second for the inning ending force. Middle of inning number two, no score. No score, bottom of the second inning. It will be Chu, Peralta, and Hafner batting for the Tribe against Jared Weaver. Indians have gone 264 plate appearances in a row at home without a homer. <laughs> you're, still, you're still trying to break it, aren't trying. you? <laughs> You've been doing it all last night. Doing it again tonight. Chu, two for four last night. The game ended when he lined hard out to uh, second base. And Brian Fuentes, after the game, said he almost felt fortunate to get Chu to hit it at somebody. Well, I think he felt that way the whole inning after the first time he faced the, the Indians out in L.A. He didn't retire a batter after the eight guys he faced. Talking about the home runs, though, in this ballpark, it's a very fair stadium. Progressive Field ranks 23rd among the 30 ballparks. In baseball, we're a uh, home run every 1.69, you know, per game. Less than two a game. And, you know, they're in a little drought here. You have to go back to, what, 91, where they had a 13-game home run stretch in that season. There's a soft liner off the shattered bat to Ibar, one down. Let's have a look at our great clip of the game from last night. Johnny Peralta had a pair of RBI hits. Peralta... With 64 runs batted in now on the year. 
and he's driven in 25 runs in his last 24 games. Relax, you're at Great Clips. So here's Johnny with the bases empty and one down. Up high around the letters, ball one. And a line drive base hit for Peralta. That's in the alley. And this may go all the way to the fence. Johnny's got two, and he'll hold with a one-out double. That's his 26th two-bagger of the year. Well, Johnny's had very good numbers uh, against Weaver. He's now six for 15. That's his fifth double out of his six hits. So Johnny continues to hit Weaver very well. Watch a ball out over the plate. He loves to extend. And that ball just stayed right there for him. And Johnny took advantage of it. Came back a little bit to the middle part of the plate. And he knew he realized he made a mistake. So the first hit of the ball game is a Peralta double, his 26th. Well, Travis Hafner steps in, trying to put last night behind him. He said, you know, last night, as we talked about on the air, he said, I chased too many bad balls. And he said, hey, the cardinal rule of hitting is get a good pitch to hit. And he said, I didn't do that last night. Well, it doesn't matter how good a hitter you are. And, and you know it. When you start swinging at pitches out of the strike zone, you're not going to succeed. You will fail. The key to hitting is working the count, get in your you – know, and, and the unfortunate thing in one of those situations for Travis, he had a 3-1 count the first time in, the, in that third inning when they had the five singles in a row, fouled off a 3-1 pitch and swung at ball four. And he knows better than that. But, you know, all hitters have, have tough days. He's got a chance to come right back here and drive in a run, though, and give the Indians a lead. Now 1-1 one, one pitch. Good fastball above the belt, one and two. Great thing about baseball, you know, that was yesterday. You don't have time to dwell. You don't have time to think. You've got to put it out of your mind, and you come right back for the next game. And he throws a fastball by him, that slight uppercut. One and two to count with Peralta second and one down. And there's a ball hit toward left. Rivera grabs it, two down. Well, Sunday afternoon when we close out this homestand with the Seattle Mariners, all kids 14 and under will receive a Cleveland Indians art kit. It's also kids, uh, Key Bank Kids Fun Day. As always, uh, festivities out on the uh, plaza. Kids can run the bases after the game, so come on out to the box office here and get your tickets or visit Indians.com. Kelly Shopik stands in with a runner at second and two down here in inning number two. Kelly, over his last 10 games, has 13 hits for a 382 average. Three homers, nine runs batted in. Kelly's saying, I know how this works. When you get a chance to play, you need to get a couple of hits, and then your name's back in the lineup the next day. And you can see, since the All-Star break, he's definitely picked up the pace from an average standpoint, and that slight adjustment he made with his hands seems to be paying off. Two balls, no strikes. Jared Weaver 
With a runner at second base and two down and a 2 0 count on Shopping. Kelly's looking for a pitch he can really let it loose on. And how about that on a 2 0 pitch? Weaver yes. cha changed a sure. base on him. It's the nature of the league right now. At the 2 0, you're going to throw him a slider. You know, if Shopping's a fastball hitter. And to become a successful major league pitcher, you throw off speed and it's a good slider or a changeup in a fastball count and have confidence you can throw it for a strike. And the two on. Just yeah, missed. That's what the, but he, you see what he did. He laid off it. Now you're back into another hitter's count. He tried to get him to, to go at two in a row and shop and get down. He had a little discipline there after swinging at the first one. Very good. He's not looking for another slider here. He's going to be looking for the, the heater again. Got Breaking ball backhanded nicely by Figgins. Long throw across, and he got him. Boy, a terrific play by Sean Figgins at the hot corner. And the inning is over. Through two, no score. In the top of the order, Sean Figgins. Jeremy Sowers has walked one, struck out one through the first two. Ball one down low to Howie Kendrick, who comes in with a 275 average. You know, here's a guy that is not getting as much playing time as he has in the past, and he's, he's a good little player. But is Sturris. The switch hitter having such a good year. And they're battling for time. Now to give you an idea what this guy can do. He had a five ribby game against the Indians July 29th and only one other Angels second baseman over the last 25 years has driven in five or more runs in a game. And that was Adam Grinch. Kennedy. Okay. We had an eight RBI game against Toronto in 2000. But Kendrick has really picked up the pace, hitting 357 since getting called back up from AAA. When he uses the right side of the field, and that's, uh, that's his strength. He, is, uh, he stays on the baseball. He's a very, very good hitter from the times that we've seen him. Obviously, they're in the other division. We don't get to see him a whole lot, and we didn't get to see him until late this year. This was the second-to-last team that, 
the Indians have played was the Angels. 3-2 pitch. Big bouncer to short. As Dribble Cabrera throws him out and one away. Well, follow the Tribe on your iPhone and iPod Touch with MLB.com at bat 2009. This great new application features play-by-play -play video highlights and live audio broadcasts. Visit Indians.com on your iPhone or iPod Touch to purchase this app today. And Eric Ibar stands in. He was two for four last night. Not only is this guy a force offensively, but defensively covers a lot of ground and seems to make just about every play. Well, yeah, he's tied with the uh, fielding percentage in the league with Derek Jeter. And second. In the right, Chu makes the catch. Two down. Well, what do you say we spin on down to the farm and check out our subway fresh face of the game. Scotty Barnes, left-hander, double-A Akron. Five and a third. And two starts for the Arrows. 1-0, 435 earned run average. 13 wins on the year. Subway, play hard. Eat fresh. Two down for Sean Figgins, who grounded out to third his first time up. Jeremy Sowers, 7 to 10 first pitch strikes tonight. You like that? Higgins had shortened a bunt and then pulled it back, and the pitch went high, one and one. Just missed outside with it. Two balls and a strike. Down low. Three and one to kill. Sowers lets it go, and it's way outside. Ball four, two-out walk brings up Bobby Abreu. Last night, the Angels were just five for 23 with less than two out, but their two-out hitting was special. They went eight for 17. Yeah, that's, that's what really did in Carmona, with all the two-out hits. Yeah. When you think about it. Bobby Abreu fouled out to third his first trip to the plate. See with two outs what kind of a read Figgins has on Sowers if he might try to steal a base. He's third in the league with 37 steals. And yeah. when you've got the second best batter with runners in scoring position at the plate, it would stand to reason you'd want to try to get yourself to second base. Well, they don't know Sars. He hasn't pitched against him. Uh, last year he did. And, you know, it's tough to remember a move only facing him one time last year. Base runners are four for five off him in stolen bases. But he, there's something you have to pick up if you're a base throw. You just don't go on first movement. It takes a couple of throws over there. But when you're falling behind now, he'll let him swing the bat now. He won't take off and get another look. And sometimes, uh, if you're a base runner, you'll want to get out there, take an extra big lead, a step or so, and force him to throw to first base so you may get a look at something. And your first base coach over there, Alfredo Griffin, he can help you. Swung on and missed. Abreu took a healthy rip. And it's 2-1. and one. That's one thing that can neutralize, you know, a running game a little bit, the left-hander with some of the base stealers here where they're not going to get as good a jump. A 
Abreu lines it to left field and reaching down to make the catch is Jamie Carroll. That ball was sinking on him in a hurry, but he makes the grab, and the inning is over. Middle three, still no score. Chris Jimenez, Grady Sizemore will bat for the Tribe against right-hander Jared Weaver. Matt Underwood, Rick Manning with you. Joined now by Indians pitcher Aaron Laffey down in the Indians' dugout. And Aaron, I don't have to tell you, you've been throwing the ball very well lately. Has there been any one thing that has worked better for you as, as you've moved back from the bullpen into, into the role of starter again? Uh, I think just one of the main things was uh, just changing my pitches and just kind of, uh, you know, keeping the hitters off balance, uh, using my changeup a lot more. And uh, that's been, definitely helped out a, a ton, you know, being in uh, hitter's advantage counts, uh, being able to throw the changeup behind an account uh, has helped a lot. It's interesting you mention that because we just watched Jared Weaver in the last inning. He fell behind 2-0 and to Kelly Shopik. He didn't throw fastballs. He came back with breaking balls. Was that the kind of thing you're talking about? Yeah, exactly. I mean, especially in those counts, 2-0, 3-1, you know, uh, guys are looking to do some damage, especially if there's runners on base. So, uh, you know, it's definitely a good thing to go to, whether it be a breaking ball or a changeup, uh, you know, just to, to use some off speed and, and keep the hitter off balance and don't let him get too greedy on you. How long did it take you to get confidence in throwing that pitch, though, when you need to throw it for a strike? Uh, it's definitely been a, a, a pitch in development for a while for me. Uh, I usually just uh, used to change speeds with my sinker and really relied on that as uh, having a, you know, a, a big, uh, big difference in the different speeds that I throw my sinker. But now I've gotten uh, a lot more comfortable with that. And I would probably say towards the end of last year and, and uh, especially this year, it was definitely one of my main things in spring training to work on was getting comfortable with that changeup and being able to throw it in any count. And I've actually thrown it in a lot of 3-2 counts this year. So. And it looks like your breaking ball is much sharper. You had a good breaking ball last time out. Yeah, it was funny. I really didn't have much of a breaking ball uh, at the beginning of the year uh, as a starter, and then I went to the bullpen, and uh, in the bullpen I kind of kind of got a good good feel for my uh, breaking ball. I think that's just because warming up for the game, I'm uh, as a reliever, you know, you're warming up quick, trying to get hot, trying to get ready to get in the game. So you know, your arm speed and everything's there, warming up for the game, and uh, you're really, you know, you got to be game ready from the time you get up in the bullpen. So I think that's helped a lot with just my arm speed and everything. Fly ball in the left center field. Torrey Hunter will make the catch, and Luis Valbuena retreats back to first base. You know, Aaron, you're also uh, you're a sinker ball pitcher primarily. You're looking for the ground ball. You field your position well. Do you do anything extra on the side? I know you guys, when you're a starter, you'll go out there and you'll throw your pen. Do you take any PFP or anything? Because you've been fielding the ball nicely as well. 
Uh, well, one thing I do a lot is, is in VP is uh, try to run down balls and, and just uh, get good jumps on balls, you know, whether it be a fly ball, a line drive, or, you know, a ground ball, and every once in a while move in closer to the infield. So you do, you know, do get a chance to, to field some of those harder hit balls. And, and uh, not only just stuff with your glove, but just doing stuff in the weight room, uh, just using the agility ladder. Uh, a little bit every you know every time I lift or just uh, when I'm strolling through the the weight room, just do a couple things on the agility ladder to work on your footwork and just you know that first step and being and being quick off the mound. So you're yeah. telling me you don't work on the play where your back's to home plate and you throw your glove up and feel <laughs> <Yeah. that. laughs> No, no, I don't. I haven't worked on that. Uh, you know, I, I used to take a lot of ground balls, uh, especially coming up, and I uh, used to get out there in front of the wall and, and just uh, let the pitching coach or whoever it may be you know take those incredible balls and you know drill them at me as hard as they could and just you know sometimes you just got to react and sometimes you just throw your glove up and it goes in i still say you could have caught that ball you almost you thought you had it didn't you yeah i thought i had it so. i did too man it would have been a great catch <laughs> so i was uh, i was definitely and there's a ball the other night in uh, minnesota i was hit back yeah, up the middle right. that i felt that i should have caught and i was pretty upset with myself about it because if I catch that ball, uh, hit back up the middle, it saves me a run. But and that's one of the things I take pride in, and uh, I definitely, you know, when any time a ball is hit anywhere near me, I'm definitely be going after it. Well, we've watched Jake Westbrook pitch here for a number of years, and, you know, he's an excellent fielding pitcher as well, so he'd be a guy to pick his brain any time you get a chance. Yeah, absolutely. Aaron, what has it been like for you this year? I mean, you think back to two years ago in 2007 when you came up and really helped this club down the stretch. You had Sabathia, you had Cliff Lee, you had Jake Westbrook. Uh, Paul Bird, and now Jake's still here, but he's on the DL, and all those other guys are gone. So many young pitchers. Who do you look to now, or do you just kind of take uh, part of that leadership role on yourself now? Well, I've definitely, even though I'm still, you know, definitely one of the youngest guys uh, here, I still take it upon myself. You know, I have been around for a couple years. Of, I've been, you know, had the opportunity to, to pitch in some big games and, and just being around those guys. Uh, you know, I was talking actually with Wyatt today. Uh, Terrega is out in the bullpen after I got done. Uh, throwing my bullpen today I was talking about and just just being around Cliff and CC and and talking with those guys and just you know just kind of either talking in the in the dugout or you know or you know whatever it may be is just uh seeing how they handle themselves how they carry themselves you know the the type of competitors that they are and the never back down attitude and that's just I think something that's really helped me you know helped me out a lot just uh being able to get the chance to talk with them and, and just uh, you know watch how they work and how they go about their business. It is fun. You had a chance to watch a couple of Cy Young pitchers do it. And, you know, really the, the only thing now is, is just get some games under your belt, and there's no reason why you shouldn't be able to do the same thing. Hey, I, I hope so. I mean, I'm definitely looking. Uh, I've stuck this year with a pitch-to-pitch -pitch mentality, and there's actually uh, another thing we were talking about. As I said, I, could, I couldn't even believe that I walked the bases loaded the other night. I said, uh, I had no clue until actually my wife told me uh, she watched the didn't get a chance to watch it because she was uh, back in Maryland and she watched the replay of the game and I was upstairs playing some Xbox and she goes did you know you walked the bases loaded I said no, really did I is that how I got the bases loaded so I just kind of you know I think it's kind of a good thing too some ignorance to you know forget about the last pitch right away and don't worry about the next one just you know good the ball's you. in your hand and just worry about that pitch in it because you know, you, I've definitely, you know, in the past I have buckled in those uh, same type of situations. You know, it's just, you know, sometimes it's been, you know, a bad pitch or sometimes it's just been bad luck. But I think one of the things I've kind of taken pride in this year is definitely staying in a pitch-to-pitch -pitch mentality. I'm just glad Jackie's keeping you straight. I, mean, I, <laughs> yeah. I just like to hear that she's like, what are you doing walking the bases loaded? What's the yeah, matter? exactly. I, I, I can't be doing that anymore. That, that's many, your pitching coach at home, man. <laughs> yeah, that's too many uh, stressful winnings there. I need to stop doing that. Well, Aaron, thanks so much for stopping by. We appreciate your time. Good luck the rest of the way this year. All right, no problem, guys. Thanks. It's Indians pitcher Aaron Laffey who's done a tremendous job this year in whatever role Eric Wedge has asked him to fill, whether it be starter, go to the bullpen, come back to the rotation. Well, he's done it all, and he's done it well. To be honest with you, at that time, I felt they made a mistake sending him to the bullpen because he was one of your better starters to begin with. But they needed help out there. And then, thankfully, well, he did get hurt coming out of that bullpen in Cincinnati, but he was able to go right back into the rotation after he come off the, the DL, and that was that was a good thing. Jamie Carroll with two down and a runner at first, and I think as you you know as you look ahead to next year, he's certainly a guy that you're going to count on. Well, yeah, you know what? He he's realizing it now, and he figures, look, I've got to go prove it. I'm not. They're not going to give me anything. Let me go out and earn my way, and that's the way you should look at it. 
and he should have no problem because he has good stuff. Not many lefties are sinker ballers. They're change-up pitchers, you know, most of them, mm -hmm. and they throw the cutters inside. But he's got that little sinker, and like he said, he used to go two-seamer and then take something off of the, the, the two-seamer. But now he's going change-up. It's improved his breaking ball, and when he needs that sinker, he can get the double play ball because he has induced about 17 double plays. Carroll pops it up. Morales gives way to Kendrick and foul ground, and the inning is over. Three complete from Progressive Field. No score. You look at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and Museum. Just down 9th Street. No score. Fourth inning. It will be Juan Rivero, Vladdy Guerrero, and Tori Hunter for the Halos. Jeremy Sowers has walked two, struck out one through the first three. 42 pitches, 23 for strikes. Just for comparison's sake, last night after three innings, Fausto Carmona had made 71 pitches. Well, the one thing Jeremy's been able to do tonight after 2-0 counts, the Angels 0 for 3. So he's had three 2-0 counts. He's been able to get through it. Last night when Carmona had the 2-0 counts, he couldn't. They're 3 for 4. Popped him up on the infield. Shortstop is Drupal Cabrera charging in. And that's out number one. Let's go back to the STO studios right now for a Ford Sports update. Here's Al Pulaski. Matt and Rick, we go north of the border. Toronto hosting the Boston Red Sox tonight. And David Ortiz off Doc Halliday. Deep to right and gone. Solo home run. Red Sox added another in the second. It's now 2-0 Boston. Third inning in Toronto. Back to you. Thanks, Al. Looks like the roof is open up there north of the border. It will be today. So it's about the same weather here. Uh, yeah. There that it is here. Guerrero fly to center his first time up. Bouncer wide a third. One one pitch and off the plate. 
13 games Guerrero has played since coming off the disabled list. He's hit 392 <laughs> with six home runs. In the air, center field. Just Grady took Sizemore. the sting out of it, though. He took the sting out of it. Makes the grab two down. Made him reach for it just enough. Time now for our direct energy, bringing the gas sequence. Take you back to the second inning. Torrey Hunter at the plate. Well, Jeremy Sauer is going to start him off. Fastball up, strike one. Torrey didn't like it. He swings at a pitch up there. Ah, oh, thought about it. Then throws that back foot slider. Missed. That was a good pitch on the check swing, and he finally got him. That check swing looked like when we showed him the side he went. Direct energy, simple solutions for your natural gas needs. So now Hunter, round two. Pitch number 50 on the night for Sowers. Boy, he had him out in front on the off-speed pitch. Torrey Hunter missed 32 games. Longest stint on the DL in his career this year. With a strain right growing. Well, and, and that's where the Angels can can make way because filling in for him was Matthews, the switch hitting center fielder where a guy, you know, can go get him. And they signed him the year before signing Torrey Hunter. Yeah. You know, now Matthews is on the bench, but this guy can go get him in left or center field, right field, it doesn't matter. But it's a nice insurance policy to have when somebody like this goes down. You're not kidding. Now the 2-2 pitch. And it's a it's a luxury that very few teams can afford. Right. To have a guy like that on your bench, too, now for Mike Socio, when you talk about making moves late in the game, whether it be for defense, pinch running, pinch hitting, I mean, Matthews is quite a weapon to pull yeah, off your bench late in the game. Even though offensively he's struggling this year, but you're right, it gives you an option. Jammed it, pops it up. Valbuena says, I'll take it. He does. One, two, three, go the Halos. And four shutout innings for Jeremy Sowers. There goes the SS Underwood. A little dinner cruise tonight as Jeremy Sowers takes a break in between innings, four shutout innings. As Dribble Cabrera launches this breaking ball deep down the right side, but hooks it foul. 
Cabrera, strikeout victim his first time up. Man, has he been some kind of locked in. 12-game hitting streak. Ninth in the American League with a 316 average. I just, he's been hitting the ball where it's pitched, utilizing the whole field, left center, center field. He pulls the slow stuff as he did right there. Tried to bunt this one uh, past just, the mound, but he popped it up. It's all right. Good try. Well, even though the Indians are in a homer drought here at home, when they go deep, we raise money for the Gathering Place, a wonderful community that helps individuals and their family members who are dealing with cancer. Great Clips donating $50 for every homer hit by the tribe. Rick and I are each donating $5 per dinger. You can make a donation as well. Log on to touchbycancer.org to learn more about the Gathering Place. All of their services that they offer to cancer patients and their family members are free of charge. They do great work from two locations, one in Beechwood, one in Westlake. Shinsu Chu lined out to second. Shattered his bat. In tight. This one is hammered right up the gut. Weaver tapping the mound. I think he thought he should have had that, or at least could have had it. It was hit hard, but it skipped right past the Angel starter. Another look. Well, any ball that's hit that low, he didn't have time to get. The, you see, he wants to get that glove down, but boy, that was hit pretty hard. You know, you see where his glove starts up here. Maybe if it was down, but. No siree. They're going to get their third hit. Chu of a single. And uh, Johnny Peralta, who doubled his last time up, will be the batter. Well, and Johnny, that double was the only extra base hit in their in the series. Uh oh, well, got him. Yes, and he Chu did. is out. Picked him off. Now I don't know if they were planning on running or not, or he got caught in between steps there, taking that one extra step towards second as Weaver went to first base. We'll get a look at it. Watch. Yep, he was leaning. He was definitely going to take off, and Weaver caught him. So he's picked off. He sure did. Johnny Peralta hammers it deep to left, but foul. that's a bit foul as he hooked it. Just watch Johnny. I looked down to see him, and he realized it. He got a hang and break of ball as Cabrera did and just hit it out foul. You know, Weaver's given up 21 home runs this year. There's the hanging breaking ball. Stays middle of the plate. But 15 of those 21 have been solo shots. So he really hasn't done a whole lot to hurt himself when you give up a solo. Just six two-run homers. And he's only given up a couple of home runs past the sixth inning. So, you know, one through five, you're going to get your home runs. After that, he's not giving it up. Good pitch inside corner. And the count now one and two. That one got away a little bit. <laughs> two balls, two strikes. Almost put. Pulls Napoli's arm out of socket. He's got to get up, climb that ladder. Came right back inside and just missed with that. Full count. And the payoff pitch. Same spot. He wasn't giving yeah. it to him that hole at bat. I tell you, he... If that's missing, I'm not sure how much it's missing by. I'll tell you what, Johnny must pick the ball up well out of his hands. I know our camera angles aren't perfect, but, boy, those pitches look too close to take. Well, with that angle where they're coming from, and maybe you think it is, but Johnny just he, he sees the ball well off Weaver, and he knows that ball's inside, so he's taking it. And it is inside. Yeah. 
You see where they're, they're not going to leave it out over the plate. He's going to make a perfect pitch, and it's a two-out walk. But Johnny has had good success, and he just looks like he picks up the ball well. One of the few right-handers that do. And Travis Hafner, who fly the left his first time up, steps in. Breaking ball, swung on and missed. Jared Weaver has given up a hit in each of the last three innings now after setting the tribe down one, two, three in the first. Outside with that, one and one. Back to back change ups. So you got a little bit inside on Hafner that first at bat. And he got him to fly out to left field after the Peralta double. So Hafner was looking for that gas on the number one pitch and got the change up. One one pitch. Trying to paint that outside corner at the knees and missed. You know, it's interesting. The breakdown on Jared Weaver home and road this year. He's eight and one with a two seventy six ERA at home. He loves the big A, doesn't he? And a six thirteen road earn run average with a four and three record. You know, and that ball can jump out of that Ana uh, that, that ballpark out in Anaheim. Sure, it can. I mean it can jump out there in a hurry. In right field. But right. that's quite a disparity ERA. Yes, under it is. three at home to over six on the road. I know it. Yeah, eight and one at home. I mean, he is twelve and four, and they do score a lot of runs. And he did that when he's on his game. He's going to be tough to beat. Let's put it that way. And they're looking for somebody to step up. You got a guy, John Lackey, who's probably been their most consistent starter of the year. He was hurt for a while though. They started out two on the Hafner. Good changeup, and it evens the count. Joe Saunders now on the DL. They got to get him back, and you know they're just looking. The guy that started last night, he was an A ball last year. Started the year in Double A ball. Bell. So they're using guys that probably shouldn't be at the big league level, but they are. You know, then they're getting away with it. Two-two pitch down low, full count. They are two games off the pace where they were last year when they won hundred games. They are seventy-two and forty-five. Last year they were seventy-four and sixty-three, or forty-three. So the runner at first, Peralta, will be off on this three-two pitch to Hafner. And Pronk fouls it down the right side. This will be pitch number 55 on the night coming up for Weaver. Two down, fourth inning. Runner at first and a 3 2 count on Travis Hafner, who is 0 for 5 in the series. For his last 12 overall. Again, the 3 2. Swung on and missed. Third strikeout for Weaver, and we are scoreless through four.
Wireless. Choose who you call for free with my circle. Any number, any network. Beautiful sunset downtown Cleveland. No score, fifth inning. Bo let us know that uh, Sowers has made 54 pitches through four innings and Weaver's made 55. There you go. Very good matchup. Jeremy has walked two, struck out one. While Weaver has allowed three base hits, he has struck out three and walked one. Mike Napoli walked his first time up for the Halos. Foul tipped one and one. Now the 1-1 one, one to Napoli. Two balls and a strike. Seven-game hitting streak for Mike Napoli. And he's been a pretty good road warrior for the Angels, batting 333 away. From the Angels home field. 3-1 pitch. And it's ball four again. So Sowers has walked Napoli twice. And this time the Angels get their leadoff man aboard for the first time tonight. Well, tickets are available for the AM PM all you can eat seats. Their $32 upper reserved seat includes unlimited dogs, popcorn, peanuts, nachos, and Pepsi products. Visit Indians.com. Here's Kendry Morales bounced into a fielder's choice that ended the second inning. Looks at a ball up high. Morales lines one deep to left field. This will go off the big wall. Nice play by Jamie Carroll. Into third is Napoli. Into second with a double is Kenry Morales. That's his 30th two-bagger on the year. And now the Angels are set up to try and take the lead tonight. First base hit of the ball game, given up by Jeremy Sowers. Morales hits that double off the wall, and it was a rocket. You can see middle of the plate. And he's not missing much in the second half of the year, I'll tell you that. Jamie Carroll played it nicely. And he gets it in quickly, throws it to second base. So it's second and third now, and nobody out. So try to minimize damage here if you're Jeremy Sowers. Howie Kender grounded the short his first time up. Swung on and missed. Now the 0-1 from Jeremy Sowers. He evens the count one and one. Kendrick trying to deliver the Angels' first run of this game and put his team in front. One-one pitch. Just missed inside two and one.
Ground ball up the middle. Diving attempt by Cabrera, but it's through. Two will score. Angels grab the lead as Howie Kendrick delivers RBIs number 44 and 45 on the year. Two zip. Angels on top. Well, he got the ground ball, but, you know, behind, it looked like a little breaking ball out over the plate under the glove of Cabrera. Had the count in his favor, so he was looking for a pretty good pitch to hit. So back-to-back -back hits now for Jeremy Sires. He's got to step off and take a deep breath and just try and keep it right where it's at. Eric Ibar flied to right his first time up. He pushed bunts it nicely done. The flip, they won't get him. He beats it out. Runners first and second. Still nobody out, and now the top of the order. Well, they lead. They're first in uh, the majors. That's their 30th bunt hit this year, and that is a beautiful bunt. I mean, watch. He, with the left-hander, he's forcing Sowers, and he didn't know whether to get the ball, come over and field it. No, he was going to beat him to the bag. Beautiful push bunt. Look at that. He's going to beat him anyway. It didn't matter. Mass confusion. That's just a beautiful bunt. That'll go as an infield single. And you're talking about keeping the pressure on the defense. Here you go. They can continue to bunt now in this situation for Ibar. His 16th bunt hit. No wonder. He's got over half of them. They have 30. He's got 16. Peralta in on the grass at third. Jimenez cheating in at first. Figgins there bunts it to third. Peralta will field, go to first, sacrifice goes five to three. Kendrick to third, I bar to second. Time now for the All Care Dental and Denture Smiling Easy Cam. And we'd like to say hello to all our friends in Columbus who are watching tonight's game. All Care Dental and Dentures. We make seeing the dentist easy. Now Bobby Abreu 0 for 2. He is fouled out to third, lined out to left. And this guy hitting just 403 with runners in scoring position. He's second in the league, believe it or not, trailing Bartlett from Tampa Bay, who is at 430 with runners in scoring position. Checked on a swing. It's a called strike, and Bobby Abreu says, are you sure? Well, he, the bat didn't come out front. They didn't call it on Hunter earlier, and he went probably three times as far. Down low. One and one. There you see, and the guy... He's hitting around 400 for the year is Maurer, whether they're in scoring position or not, isn't he? Hitting 383, I think, coming into today. Yes, he is. He, yes, that's exactly right. 1-1 one, one pitch. And it's outside. Still a long way to go. But George Brett was, well, he was around 390 in August. Well, I think he ended the year hitting 390 or 388, and Carew did the same thing. Uh, Brett hit 390 for the year. Carew, I think, was 388 back in 77. Two one pitch, fouled away. So but Brett must have been closer to 400 he was over, around. He was yeah, over he was 400 or over. I yeah. mean, maybe you know, slightly over. That's unbelievable. You know, you, we were talking about it on our last road trip. You said, well, who do you like, Suzuki or you like Maurer? Now he's got a 20-point lead over Ichiro. Yeah. And there still is a long way to go. Don't worry, Ichiro can get 50 hits in a month himself. 2-2 <laughs> pitch. 
Bouncing ball Third. is short. Cabrera will look the runner back. Throw to first, and he just does get a Brayu. A run scores, 3 nothing Angels. That's actually all he could do because there was nobody at second base, so you could have got the guy in scoring position. So he had to hurry and get rid of it, but uh, Abreu will get the RBI on the ground out, so it's a 3 nothing ball game. 81 runs batted in now for Bobby Abreu. Came in tied for sixth. And a runner at second, two down now for Juan Rivera, who is 0 for 2. And uh, got word from the boys in the truck, from Murph, Brett was hitting 400 on September 19th. So he took it deep into September. <laughs> Two weeks to go. Man. How much closer can you get than that? And then they, uh, they, they said that uh, Williams was just at 400 the last day of the year, and they had a doubleheader, and they asked him if he wanted to sit. He was actually batting 399.98 something. Yeah. Right. So he rounded it up. It was 400, and his manager said, you can sit. You don't need to play. And he said, hell no, I'm playing. And he played both games of the doubleheader. I think he wound up getting six or seven hits for the day. Yeah. And ended up in 406, yeah. Oh, one pitch outside. You know what? I remember that too, Rick, and I can't remember the hitter, but it's been within the last 10 years. Whoever was leading the American League in batting sat out the last game of the season. And I remember thinking, oh, he's no Ted Williams. You know, he had a comfortable lead for the batting title. For the batting title. He sat out the last game knowing that whoever was behind him. Would have had to get four, four hits, and then, you know if he went over, then you know maybe the guy could have caught him. So he just he just he didn't play the last game. I don't know who you're talking about there. I'd have to sit back and think about it, but I do remember it go down to the last year one time in Kansas City, with Willie Wilson. I think Hal McRae, and I think Hal McRae won it on the last day of the year. Teammates battling it out. Huh? I think so. Yeah. One two pitch. Popped in the air. Right fielder Shin Such coming in. Chu makes the grab. And the inning is over. But the Angels strike first. After four no hit innings, Jeremy Sowers yields three. Tried down three nothing. Was cruising along, really pitching well. Walked the leadoff man in that fifth. And how many times has that 
unravel an inning for a pitcher, and it wasn't so much that it unraveled it. He gave up the double to Kendry Morales, and then as the Angels do, they're the guys that can put pressure on you, put pressure on them. And they ended up with three runs in the top half of the inning. So now it's the Tribe's turn. They have three hits tonight. But they have been unable to break through. Well, you know, they didn't score for him in his last start against the Rangers. They only scored one in the ball game. Offensively, you know, come on back and get him some runs and let him get right back out there. At least get on the board. Well, they've had four base runners, and of those four base runners, none of them have moved from their original right, base. Right. A double, two singles, and a walk. Two zero pitch to Shopik, right down Broadway. Actually, Shopik was robbed of a, of a base hit in this uh, first hit bat by. Sean Figgins took a double away from him where the Indians might have scored in that inning after Peralta double. Made a beautiful play down at third base. Remember, he came back with that another, uh, the third straight breaking ball. Popped him up on a 2-1 pitch. Abreu, the right fielder, calls for it, and that's out number one. Let's go back to the STO studios for a Ford sports update with Al Pulowski. Matt, Rick, let's go to Detroit where uh, Seattle and Tigers in a pitcher's duel until the fifth. Ichiro Suzuki, two-run over to right, his eighth of the year. Seattle scores three in the fifth inning. They're ahead now, 3 nothing in the sixth. Back to you. All right, thanks, Al. Here is Luis Valbuena, who had a hit for the Tribe his first time up. Looks at a curveball for a strike. There's a liner down the left field line, and it's a fair ball. Into the corner it goes. Valbuena on his way to second. He'll go in without a throw as Rivera had trouble picking it up. Wouldn't have mattered. And Luis Valbuena is two for two tonight, and that's his 19th double on the year. Well, this one, it looked like it hit chalk, Matt. It stayed right down there, but it, he stayed on it. And that ball elevated a little bit. You see where the glove of Napoli had to come back and just inside the line. So Valbuena gets another one of his favorite hits, a double. That is number 19 on the year. And now here come the Indians. They have a chance to get right back on the board. Chris Jimenez flied out to center in his first at-bat. And Jimenez takes a first pitch strike. Well, that's been the difference tonight for Weaver from when we saw him the last time. He didn't have that breaking ball no. for a strike. Not an Anaheim. That's exactly right. He went five innings in that start. Gave up eight hits and four runs. And he did not. He was basically going fastball changeup, I remember. And it didn't look like he was throwing the ball that hard in that start. No. He didn't have the kind of velocity that you normally see. I mean, he was in the 80s. Right, he was at 88, sitting right around tops for him there, and he's been 91 at times tonight, maybe 92, but hit, hitting right around 90, but with a good slider. But he has hung a couple, and they've hit him foul. High pop, left center field. Torrey Hunter makes the catch, two down. Let's have another look at the Alltel text poll question of the game. Youngest player to reach 3,000 career hits. Hank Aaron, Robin Yell, Ty Cobb, Pete Rose. Text your answer to 31962. Testing the trivia knowledge here tonight.
Up high, ball one. Brady Sizemore ropes it foul down the right side into the seats. Jared Weaver with a runner at second and two down here in the fifth. The Angels lead it three to nothing. Just missed inside, but he hasn't really been able to get that pitch consistently all night. And give Daryl Cousins credit, he's been consistent all night. He's not giving you a little bit off the plate. You gotta truly you gotta earn it. You've I mean, gotta truly yes, get it on the You've got to get it on the plate. And you know, as a hitter, if you know you you don't have to swing at it, it certainly helps. Well, that's a wicked off speed pitch, two and two. Well, that's what he's done when he's been behind. He comes back with that breaking ball. And now the 2 2 pitch up high, full count. I'm starting to put the pieces together about about what I was talking about last inning with the batting title. Remember yeah. I told you somebody's sitting. Oh out. yeah, right. I'm starting to put the starting pieces. to come together for me now. Shall we wait till the yeah, uh, in between innings? We'll yeah. talk because the minute I start talking about it, this inning is going to come to an end. That's a good point. This will be the That's 70th it. pitch of the night for Weaver. We want it to keep going. Exactly. Get a base hit. So I'm not going to start talking about it. Here's the three two. Fouled on the right side. Brady Sizemore tonight is grounded out to second and fly to center after going two for three with two walks in last night's game. And Grady has been swinging a much better bat of late. Came in five for his last 11 during a three game streak and a 387 average in his last eight games. Now Napoli calls for time. He wants to go out and make sure that they're on the same page. With an important pitch coming to Sizemore right here. <laughs> Just once I want to see somebody say, take that glove away from your face. I, I can't tell what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> that is funny, isn't it? I don't know. I guess in the world of video now, people, someone's going to, you know, lip read or something. They can't hear you or read lips when you're talking to them right to their face. How it, they all, do it? it all goes back to Greg Maddox and Will Clark in the National League Championship Series. 3-2 pitch. Grady hits a high pop, shallow right center. Abreu in. Hunter says, I'll take it. He does inning over. Five complete. Angels three, Indians nothing.
locked up. Sixth inning. Jeremy Sowers will face Vladimir Guerrero, Torrey Hunter, and Mike Napoli. All right, we were talking before about batting titles and guys hitting close to 400 and going down the stretch, and I, I said to you, I seem to recall in the last, 10, the last years. 10 years, a guy sitting out the last game of the season to protect his average so he could win the batting title. And then I started thinking back after we looked at the names of the last batting champs, and I'm like, well, it wasn't one of those guys. Then I started thinking, <laughs> it's sick. the last 10 years because that's when I read the story. But the actual occurrence was in 1911 when you are goofy. Joe Jackson, shoeless Joe Jackson, who was playing for Cleveland at the time, he was chasing Ty Cobb, and Ty Cobb sat out the last three games of the season to protect his average. And so shoeless Joe couldn't catch him. And Ty Cobb ended up winning the well, batting title. Glad that was in the last ten years. Well, it wasn't. I think Bob Feller was one. <laughs> I'm thinking, you know. No, I don't think so. <laughs> well, 1911. Bob is what 90 years old. Oh boy. Yeah, that's a long time ago. And yeah. Murph now Murph says he thinks he knows. <laughs> he's got one, so he's going to have to tell you his. 80th pitch of the night for Sowers. Swung on and missed. That's his second strikeout tonight, one down. They don't forget Friday's Mega Millions jackpot is over the $200 million mark. Think about so, that. That's amazing. It was, what's it, two, uh, 207? $207 million. The, uh, Buyout. The cash option is a, a little over 130 million. 130. Stop by your local Ohio Lottery retailer and grab your ticket today. Got to get one tomorrow. Did it even cost 200 million dollars to build this ballpark? I'm trying to remember back. Just I think yeah, just a little bit over it. Win the lottery or build a ballpark? Yeah, the choice is yours. Well, this could be your house. <laughs> It's worth a little bit more than that probably nowadays. Although with the real estate crunch Boy, across you America. Yeah, you never know. <laughs> Torrey Hunter 0 for 2 looks at a ball down low. 2 and 1 to count. Ha, I was right. $175 million to build this place. Good for you. Well, then you can buy it. <laughs> If. Yeah, first you have to win. Bouncing ball up the middle. Valbuena, Valbuena had the backhand, and he tried to flip it to Cabrera, but he would not have had a chance to get Hunter anyway. So, a one-out single for Hunter, and it will bring up Mike Napoli. Well, even if they field this ball, they're not going to have a chance with uh, Hunter. You know, he tried that old backhanded flip to get it to Cabrera. Where were we on the road? Were we in the Chicago or? Uh, yeah, I think Chicago. Where he did that flip that over. Was tremendous and they made play. play. It was bang bang at first base. They called him safe, but it looked like he was out. It was on one of our last road trips. I just remember thinking, you got to, you have to give it to him there. You got to call him out if it's close. Mike Napoli launches one to deep left. Back goes Carroll on the track. Jumps up and makes the grab. And back to first goes Torrey Hunter. Two down. Nice play by Carroll, yeah, who's not played a whole bunch in left field. Yeah, you know, for a guy that hasn't been out there, he played one off the wall very nicely. This one, he, you know, he thought he was getting to the wall. And that just is, comes from not being out there. He's not an outfielder, but he's doing a pretty good job. So he holds on, he makes the catch, he, he senses, and he feels that wall. And that's one thing. He, he, the wall never loses. It always <laughs> wins. He also made a nice catch on the sinking liner to yes, end the he third did. inning. He's held his own out there tonight. Good job for Jamie. Kendry Morales doubled and scored his last time up. No squibber foul. Kendrick Morales is the 18th Cuban native to appear with the Angels. I was listening to Mike Brito.
coming into today's on the he was on the radio doing an interview he's the famous scout at dodger stadium used to see in the old days wear the white panama hat and have the radar gun behind home plate right mike brito said he played with louis tion in the mexican league in the early 1950s in one year louis tion went five and 22 he lost 22 games the next year he won 23 games and then the indians signed him right after that inning over we'll go to the bottom of the sixth Three zip angels. Who's laying on their back shooting that? Three zip angels on top as we go to the bottom of the sixth. Jamie Carroll is Drupal Cabrera and Shinsu Chu here in inning number six. Jared Weaver with a first pitch strike. Carroll 0 for 2 with a strikeout, fouled out last time up. Nice play by Figgins, throws him out. Boy, Figgins can cover some ground. Yes, he can. Nice play on the other end to scoop it up by Morales. One away for his Drupal Cabrera. Here's our Northern Ohio Toyota Dealers game recap. Howie Kendrick put the Angels on the board with a two-run single up the middle. Third run came on a Bobby Abreu ground out for a dealer near you visit buyatoyota.com that's it so far tonight jared weaver working on a four hit shutout well this is certainly a different picture than we saw in la one up smash backhanded nicely by kendrick two down Well, the Indians have teamed up with Operation Homefront to ensure military school children will receive much-needed school supplies. If you bring a back-to-school uh, item to tomorrow night's game, you'll receive a free upper-box ticket to any game in September. Some of the items uh, needed included our crayons, rulers, folders, notebooks, notebook, book paper. So donate a new backpack or, or any Indians team shop, and you receive 20% off purchases. Shinsu Chu looks at a strike. He's one for two tonight, and a base hit his last time up. Indians have just haven't been able to put anything together against Weaver tonight. They've had a hit in four straight innings. And make it five. Fair ball into the corner. And Chu on his way to second with a double. So that is a hit in five straight innings. But one thing 
that they haven't been able to do is move any of those runners. Well, last night it was 12 singles. Tonight they have five hits, uh, three doubles. They wanted to go upstairs and make Chu try to swing through it, but he was able to get on top of it and slice it the other way. Sure was. That's not an easy pitch to handle for a left-hander, but Chu stayed on it. Both Napoli and Weaver saying, hey, he's not supposed to do that. Right. That's <laughs> why they wanted to elevate and, and try him to swing through it. He didn't do it. He stayed on top. All right, Johnny Peralta has doubled, and he has walked. There's a strike called on that inside corner. It's been tough sledding, but give Weaver credit. Even well, he though goes he hasn't back thrown in a there. lot of strikes in there, he continues to pound away. Well, and Johnny's going to take a little walk out and say, boy, I didn't think so. I thought that was the same spot. That's okay. He's still going to look out over the plate for something to hit. See if Weaver, see, Weaver's got first base open. He knows Peralta swings the bat well off him, so he's just going to maybe tease him a little bit. But he did get strike one. Got and another pitch. Banged foul, 0 and 2. So now he can go to work with him. He's got a couple pitches to work with if he chooses. And if you see that breaking ball, you're not going to see him hang one, or he's certainly not going to try to. I wouldn't be surprised to see it way off the plate. If he wants to try and get him out inside, you'll see a breaking ball away. If he wants to try and get him out outside, I think you'll see a fastball in. In off the plate. Now you'll see the breaking ball away. Just depends on how they want to, do, to go about it. But I think you'll see that breaking ball away. See if you can get Peralta to reach. Double up. They doubled up in there. Popped him up. Shallow left. Rivera. Inning over. Six complete. Three nothing Angels. slash go tribe for details and by AM PM too much good stuff it's a three nothing Angels lead seventh inning here at Progressive Field Jeremy Sowers gave up three runs in the fifth but that's been it tonight 87 pitches made by the Indians left hander Well, he really, he's, he's pitched a, a beautiful game. He's moved the ball in and out. He's, this is the third time through the lineup. He, he, he's only given up the one hit. Although the sacrifice came from Figgins uh, in that inning to get another run across the plate. It was a leadoff walk in the fifth and a line drive double. 
And then the base hit by Kendrick, or ground ball under the glove of Cabrera. That push bunt by Arbar, which was a very headsy play and a great bunt. But Jeremy is really taking the, the sock out of the bat of the Angels. You know, he's had to face the, the Rangers in his last start and really only gave up four runs in that game. No run support there for him, and he's got nothing in this one. So for him, he realizes right now he can't afford to give up any more. He's at the 90 pitch mark. Two balls, two strikes on Howie Kendrick, who delivered the biggest hit of the game. A two-run single that played it a pair in the fifth, right after a walk to Mike Napoli and a double by Kenry Morales. Rolls it right to second baseman Luis Valbuena. One away. Well, Saturday, the Indians will host the Mariners, and there'll be a, a post-game fireworks show as Rock and Blast returns. Not one, it will be two, because they have one on Friday night as well. You'll be part of the show. Again, come on out, and it is one of the best fireworks show ever. If you think the normal ones are very good, well, you wait till you see Friday and Saturday nights. They top them all. They're ten times better. Eric Ibar had a good rip, but he follows it straight back. And then Kelly Shopik went to the kick save, trying to keep the ball from rolling all the way back out onto the field. Bunted in the air, and Peralta says, I'll put that in my back pocket, no problem, two down. Well, you can win a new home theater system in the Great Clips Upgrade My Viewing Contest. The package includes a 32-inch Samsung 1080p TV, a Sony Bravia DVD home theater system, and a Sony Blu-ray player. Stop by your local Great Clips location and register to win before August 30th. Get a little trim, register to win. And you could be watching <laughs> yes, yeah, whatever all you your want. favorite programs in HD. Whatever you That's want. Right. John Figgins checks on a pitch that's up high. One and one. Here's one you have to love. 1963 on this day, Fenway Park. Dick Stewart hits a high fly ball. Indians outfielder Dick Davalio goes back to the fence. It hits that, you know, they had that uh, the uh, ladder that was attached yes. to the wall above yep. the scoreboard. It hits the ladder, ricochets off Davalio's head. And before he can go get it, Dick Stewart goes all the way around, crosses a plate for an inside the park home run. You're kidding. <laughs> you talking about knock him out? Insult to injury. <laughs> I mean, that, that fence is only less than 300 feet away. Shortstop could have went out and got it. Where did it go after it hit Devil Leo's head? I want to know. <laughs> maybe it maybe went back towards center field. That's all I can figure. You always think about Jose Canseco. I'd have to see that one on television to, to, to appreciate yeah. it. Well, I'm guessing 1963 probably weren't a lot of games televised. No, I know that. <laughs> you think? <laughs> now the 2-2 two -two to Figgins. Breaking ball missed outside. Two down, base is empty, seventh inning. 
Three nothing Angels on top. 100 pitches for Sowers. And that's outside. Another walk for Figgins, his second free pass tonight. And that's the fourth walk issued by Sowers. You can see the 2009 Cleveland Browns for the first time live at Brown Stadium for as little as $16. You'll get 50% off any ticket purchase for the Browns preseason opener against the Lions. It's this Saturday at 7.30, presented by AT&T. Buy online now at clevelandbrowns.com. Indians bullpen just now starting to get busy as Jeremy Sowers has crossed the 100-pitch mark and Bobby Abreu. 0 for 3 with an RBI will step in. And a first pitch strike. It's funny, I was watching Abreu just step out, and after that pitch was called a strike, he looks down at Figgins. Those guys are starting to make eye contact, and maybe Figgins, if he knows he's going to run, will give him a sign. You know, to let him know, to, you know, to protect him or don't swing or yeah. give him a chance. And, you know, good players, and they're veteran players, they'll do something like that. Up and in to even the count. Well, you could look down there, and uh, Figgins will just say, go ahead and swing the bat. I'm not running now. Well, Figgins has only been on once before tonight, so not sure how much of a read he's been able to get on Sowers. As Rick told you, they Steelers have had success when they've run. They just haven't run a lot against him. What did you say, four for five? Yeah, right? four out of five. You know, and the one thing I like, he hasn't thrown to first base a lot, so they really don't know much about his move. The more you throw to the first, then they, they have something to pick up from. You know, Cliff Lee was a guy that would never throw to first base. Mm -hmm. If you're a left-hander sometimes, sometimes just hold the ball and, and when make he, them wait, 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 and they'll call timeout. When he did throw to first, it was nothing oh, to he had appreciate. A terrible <laughs> move. Are you kidding me? I know why he didn't throw now. It was like he was throwing donuts over there. I think Cliff's pitching tonight for Philly. Inside three and one. Yes, he is, and the Phillies are guess beating right. Arizona 7-1. to one. He's throwing a one-hitter. Yeah, one-hitter. That must have been a home run, and guess who? Probably uh, who's Mark third? Reynolds. Yeah, Mark Reynolds. I would. Uh, that's my guess. That would be a good guess. I'd give you even money. <laughs> 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 Meanwhile, Seattle leads Detroit 3-1. They're in the eighth inning at Comerica Park. Three, one there pitch runner go. goes three pitch outside ball. won't matter the Shavik really uh, I mean I guess you have no choice as a catcher if you wait for the umpire's call he's going to steal it if it's a ball it's a, it's a walk so no stolen base back to back walks Shop account for a quick chat. As the bullpen tries to get heated up, Chris Perez trying to get loose in a hurry. They're checking to see if he's ready. He may be ready to pull the plug. Juan Rivera, right-handed hitter. Let's see if Eric Wedge has made up his mind or if he wants to give Sowers one more hitter. I would assume he's ready to make the move. Yep, here he comes. So that's going to do it for Jeremy Sowers. Pretty solid effort when you consider how potent and how lethal this Angels lineup can be. Sowers goes six and two-thirds innings, gives up three runs on just four hits. And he is responsible for the two runners on base, both by the walk, and five walks allowed by Sowers here tonight. But uh, all in all, yeah. You have to admire the way he went out there and, and battled. Yes, he did. I'll tell you what, he pitched a very good game. He didn't give up a hit till the fifth inning. And walked the leadoff man. They made a, you know, they had a bunt in that inning. I'll tell you, he did. He pitched a great game. So Jeremy will exit. And Chris Perez is coming on when we come back.
struck out 15. And he'll be facing Juan Rivera, who is 0 for 3. Jammed him, popped in the air. Shallow center, dropping in a hurry, but Grady Sizemore's there to rescue it. And the inning is over. Stretch time at Progressive Field, 3-0 Angels. That new menu is coming to your favorite panini soon. Stay up to date at paninisgrill.com. A little damp here in downtown Cleveland as the rain falls. Bottom of the seventh, Travis Hafner, Kelly Shopik, Luis Valbuena against Jared Weaver, who's made 80 pitches so far tonight. Carl Willis talking with Jeremy Sowers, who, as we said, pitched well tonight. Yeah, when you hold the league's leading team to you just three runs and let's say it was almost seven innings because Perez came out and made one pitch. That's that's a good job. You got except uh, Jared Weaver's been a little bit better. He's actually given up more hits than Sowers has, but the Indians haven't bunched anything together. That's been the difference. A walk and a double set up the Angels' only run scoring option, uh, opportunities tonight. Well, well, when we talked about it, this is how their offense has been going. They usually seem to have one big inning if they're going to do anything. You know, they haven't been able to string anything together for consecutive innings or things like that. When they have scored, it seems like they've had a big inning when they've gotten their wins. Well, let's hope that big inning is still to come. Shift on for Hafner, 3 and 1 to count. He's in a good count, three and one. But with the shift on, he hit it right at Ibar. One away. Let's go back to the STO studios for a Ford Sports update with Al. All right, guys, let's go down to Arlington, Texas, where the Twins are taking on the Rangers. And Michael Young, as he's been doing all year, delivers his base hit to right field. will score two. Texas ahead, three nothing, fourth inning. Back to you, Matt Rick in Cleveland. All right, Al. Here is Kelly Shopik 0 for 2. Well, how about Atlanta? They're beating the Mets 14 to 2 tonight. Atlanta's playing pretty well. Kelly Shopik hit that ball hard, but just a little bit too far out in front of it. And the New York Mets are fading into oblivion. Now, do they have anybody that started the year with them? Seattle continues to lead Detroit 3-1, bottom of the eighth inning. That's, that's the Seattle ball club that 
still on the periphery of things, but that's how they win. They win low scoring. They win one run ball games. That's the nature of their, that ball club this year. They'll be here this weekend. Meanwhile, Detroit with a three game lead over the White Sox in the Central Division coming into play tonight. Missed inside. White Sox won earlier today. They beat Zach Greinke. Yes, they did. That was Contreras that started for the White Sox. One, two, Tapper to third. Figgins. Flips it over, two down. Let's check out our McDonald's on 11. Is going to go to Luis Valbuena tonight, who is two for two. First time up, draws a base hit between short and third. Second time, well, that side of the field was very nice to me. So I'm going to go back out there, and he's going to love it. He gets a double. Well, I'm coming up for the third time. Three for five in the series now for Valbuena. And a ball down low. 90 pitches on the night for Jared Weaver. I pop shortstop by bar circles under it. Indians go one, two, three. We'll go to the eighth, three nothing, Angels. Halos. Chris Perez will stay on and work the eighth. He'll face Vladimir Guerrero, Tori Hunter, and Mike Napoli. Guerrero, 0 for 3. He's twice fly to center and struck out his last time up.
Fisted foul. He's going to the he's top of the try and put it in play. Doesn't matter where it's at. <laughs> Almost got Johnny John, Strada down I was going to say, was that Johnny over there? He's not on top of the mountain today. <laughs> he's down below in a, in a valley. Look out, Johnny. It's coming right at you. He's going to get the pick. He's going to pick that ball. Swung on and missed. Guerrero strikes out for the second time tonight. One down in the eighth. Well, visit Indians.com for an exclusive free T-shirt offer now through Sunday. Purchase a minimum of uh, two tickets to a remaining 2009 game. Receive a free Indians T-shirt. Quantities are limited. Offer only available at Indians.com while supplies last. Tori Hunter takes a strike. Tommy Bo says Vladdy has seen 12 pitches. He swung at nine of them. Well, and he would have swung at the other three, but they probably would have hit him. They, <laughs> he couldn't get his leg out of the way. Torrey Hunter takes the ball down low. One and one to kill. Well, another special fill the house for charity night here at Progressive Field, benefiting the Special Olympics of Greater Cleveland. All told, $21,225 raised tonight for the Special Olympics of Cleveland. And on the year, the Fill the House for Charity events have raised a total of uh, just under half a million dollars. So that's nice. Thanks to everybody for participating. Good job. Those great events. Well, I know what I almost forgot to, to do, too. I'll wait till after this pitch, after that foul ball, it woke me up. It was down a couple of booths. One, two pitch. Up and in. Hunter got to scurry out of the way. Oh, I know where you're going with this. I forgot as well. That's exactly right. Tonight is uh, Tom Hamilton's birthday. So uh, he cut underneath the slider there. We would like to send along our best wishes to our partner over on the radio side of the, the he, game, he Tom a, Hamilton. He was a little grumpy about the birthday today. There he is. There's Tommy. Yeah. Hello, Hammy. Happy birthday, pal. <laughs> He's got the Xavier shirt on. Here's the chopper to third. For that. Peralta throws him out. Two down. He needs some new gear. He does. Maybe for his birthday, we should go in, get him some new gear. Yeah, we will do that later. We can there see he that. is. Happy birthday, Hammy. Happy birthday there, partner. Yeah. He's looking <laughs> at his numbers. <laughs> oh, boy. There they are. He saw it. He monitor. saw it. There's the monitor. <laughs> oh, boy. There we go. You just never know when you're on. Two down for Mike Napoli, who has walked twice tonight. And his walk leading off the fifth inning led to that mini rally yeah. in which the Angels scored their only three runs tonight. Well, really, the biggest thing there was the, the Morales double that set up that hole in. Yeah. Went second and third. Pasted it off the wall and left, and Kendrick yeah. delivered the single. Their offense, you know, a ground ball base hit, a little bunt, another ground ball, and they get a run home, and there's your three runs. Rain seems to have stopped here at Progressive Field. The 0-2 pitch. Fouled back. You Play. remember earlier in, at the start of the game, we had the breeze was blowing straight in from center, and now it's turned around and it's blowing straight out. Well, it's weird well, that you, you know, see it change that drastically in one it's game. It's just a matter of time. We're going to get some rain at some point in time before this weekend. Let's just wait till this game's over. Chris Perez has been throwing the ball very well. He definitely You know, has. his last... Eight, nine outings. Ten out of 12 pitches for strikes I tonight. Mean, he's, he's throwing the ball well. He's Here you see the good fastball. He blew it by Napoli. Strikes out a pair in the inning. And he's retired all four that he has faced. Middle of the eight, three-nothing Angels.
Jared Weaver has made 92 pitches tonight. You talk about efficient. Nine pitches in the first, then 15, 13, 18, 16, 9, 12. He's been very good. He's He's been in total command, Matt. You know, and speaking of command, he's had command of the baseball. Out of his 92 pitches, 57 strikes. He's in walked there for one. A strike. Chris struck out three. Chris Gemini is 0 for 2. He's fly twice to center. The scoreboard update brought to you by Coors Light. Frost brewed Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. Long way. Well. Rivera almost. Came in too quickly on that ball. Yeah, he almost overran that ball. Ran it into a double. One away. Top of the order, Grady Sizemore. 0 for 3 tonight. Oops, where am I going? Well, one last jump. <laughs> That's like something you do in batting practice there. Ninety-fifth pitch of the night for Jared Weaver. Found away. Hey, tonight after the game, stay tuned for training camp daily. Jim Donovan, all the gang, will have the latest from HQ and Berea. As the Browns get ready for their home opener against the Lions in preseason. Comes this Saturday. Grady Sizemore has his first hit tonight, his third hit in the series. Sixth hit for the Tribe tonight. The only innings they haven't had a hit tonight, the first and the seventh. They've had a hit in every other inning. You know, when you when you look at Weaver too, his pitch count right around the hundred. This will probably it doesn't matter if he has a quick inning, his last inning. Although he does have three complete games on the air, he had one May seventh, May seventeenth, and this last one coming June fourteenth. That one against the Padres. And then that last one, it was 119 pitches, and that's his uh, high for the year. Well, when you said that ERA is 613 on the road, he's 4 and 3. It's certainly, you wouldn't be able to tell, no. prove that tonight. He looks right at home. The 0 1 down low. One ball, one strike. Well, they haven't done anything out of the stretch. It's almost like the, the, the base runners get on and they just stay where they're at. That's exactly what's happening. for nine when he's coming out of the stretch. One one pitch to Carroll up high. The only time the Indians have had back-to-back -back hitters reach was in the fourth when Peralta walked after Chu single, but Chu had already been picked off at first base by the time Peralta walked. Jared Weaver about to make his 100th pitch tonight. Chops it to third. Figgins on the big hop. Goes to second for one. The relay, not in time. White. There aren't a lot of third basemen who would even think about trying to turn a double play there, but Figgins got to that ball and got rid of it in a hurry. You know, they made it very close, very aggressive play by Sean Figgins, but it was, you know, waist high. He says, I can get it over there to Kendrick. Kendrick went ahead and tried to turn that double play, but Jamie beat it out. So it was a nice try, a nice attempt, and it was a good feed. And now is Dribble Cabrera 
Might be his final shot to keep that career high 12 game hitting streak alive. 0 for 3 tonight. It's down low for ball one. One oh pitch. Wide two balls, no strikes. Waiting the 2 0 pitch as Carroll inches off at first. Breaks his bat, one hops it to second. Kendrick throws him out and will go to the ninth. 3 0 Angels. Right-hander Jess Todd coming on in relief for the Tribe. Third pitcher of the night after Chris Perez went an inning in a third. Scoreless baseball is two strikeouts. Chris Todd pitched uh, the ninth inning in last night's game. He'll face the bottom third of the Angels order here. Got a couple strikeouts and a walk. Strike to the outside corner. Morales one for three, doubled and scored in the fifth inning. And that double, nothing new. He's tied for third and extra base hits this year in the American League. 26 home runs, 30 doubles, couple of triples. You know, he's been up and down before too, but it's really his first full year. Yeah. You know, getting a chance to play every day, and he is he's taking advantage of it. And the one two from Todd is in down near the foot. Two and two. Texas in front of Minnesota, four nothing. Still only the bottom of the fourth. In Arlington. 
White Sox won earlier today, beating Zach Greinke and the Royals. 4 2 was the final in that game. Outside, full count. And they've gone to the bottom of the, uh, bottom of the ninth in Detroit, where the Mariners lead the Tigers 3 to 1. Payoff pitch. Fouled it off his body. Morales taking a little extra time before he climbs back in. Fouled away. Ninth inning, three nothing Angels on top. Indians have out hit the Angels six to four. And the payoff pitch in the air left field. Back goes Carroll. And Jamie makes the grab one away. Let's get a look at the Altel text poll results and our little trivia question tonight. Youngest player to reach 3,000 career hits. And the correct answer is Ty Cobb, who actually achieved that feat on this day at the age of 34 in 1921. He got his 3,000th career hit off Red Sox pitcher Elmer Myers. Howie Kendrick, one for three. And his big two-run single in the fifth. Two zero in the air, center field. Brady Sizemore, two down. Pediatric blood cancer took the lives of two-year-old Hope Fimiani and seven-year-old Michael Sparkman. Please help the ongoing research of pediatric blood cancers at Rainbow Babies and Children's Hospital on September the nineteenth. At Embassy Suites Hotel on Rockside Road, you'll enjoy dinner, drinks, and a chance to win a Harley-Davidson, vacation trips, and a LeBron James autographed jersey. To purchase tickets, make a donation, or to learn about the story of Hope and Michael, visit asparkofhope.com. Eric Ibar, one for three, bunt single in the fifth. One ball, two strikes. I was just noticing. I'm sure Tony and Willie on the visiting side, they just have to be thrilled at the guys who have the pine tar, and then they rest the bat on the shoulder. Yeah, well. Look at Ibar's shoulders. They're all. You know, they've got spray for that stuff. Dark. I know it. I know it. They have the spray and everything else for that now. Not that it doesn't make it more work for those guys. There you go. <laughs> Look at that. That's just from the pinter on his bat. <laughs> when I, I noticed, Rick, when he was resting it on his left shoulder, it actually sticks to the jersey. You'll watch it. He'll pick it up, and the jersey yeah, comes up right. with it. <laughs> Maybe it's, it's helping him keep his bat down his hands. <laughs> He's out looking. Another good he inning. Got stuck to his shirt. For the Indians bullpen. Last chance for the Tribe coming up next.
And from the looks of things, Jared Weaver is at least going to attempt a complete game shutout bid here in the ninth inning. Weaver has three complete games this year and one shutout. Well, as I mentioned, his high in, the, in his last complete game was 119 pitches against uh, the Padres. Well, Chu lost the bat on that swing and miss. He might need a little more of that pine tar that we were just talking about. Well, we know who he can borrow some from. <laughs> just go, go to the shortstop. Just tap right. his shoulders and you're good. <laughs> That's the old stick -em. There you go. A nice little change up, and there goes the bat. It doesn't look like Chu uses any pine tar. Well, you know, they also have something that's clear down oh, that's there right. called the claw. That you know, stick. it's not, yeah, yeah, that little stick really makes it sticky for you. In the air, left field. Back goes Rivera, backpedaling, and he's got it one away. Time now for our Northern Ohio Buick Pontiac GMC performance of the game. And this guy's done a number on the Indians tonight. He's given up six hits, but none of them consecutively. They yeah. haven't put anything together against Weaver tonight. They haven't moved after they got off base. It, it's been a, a, his best game by far in a long time. He's pitched a dandy tonight. He really has looked, looked good. Johnny Peralta one for two with a double. Coming off the start on the road in Baltimore where he went three and a third inning. So he had something to prove tonight, and he, he went out and did it. Popped him up infield. Figgins, third baseman, two down. Well, he's one out away now. Travis Hafner 0 for 3. We'll step in for the tribe. Hey, tomorrow right here on Sports Time Ohio, Bruce Drennan will have all bets are off at 3. Tee it up, Ohio comes your way at 6. Then at 6.30, it's the Chrysler Jeep Indians on deck show. Indians Angels wrap up the three-game series at 7. And then training camp daily after the ball game. All tomorrow right here on STO. And don't forget, coming up, after we wrap up this ball game, Conrad's postgame show. We'll look at the highlights and look forward to the finale of this series tomorrow night. Outside, one and one. Back over the screen. Hafner flied to left in the second inning. Struck out to end the fourth and grounded to short with the shift on. It was a ball hit hard up the middle. That was in the seventh inning. Down low. Two balls, two strikes. Now the 2-2 pitch. Low, full count. Kelly Shopik hoping for a chance. If Hafner can get aboard. Here in the ninth with two down. 3-2 pitch. Popped up back out of play. One hundred and thirteen pitches for Jared Weaver, seventy four strikes. Trying to finish off a six hit shutout. And the three two is lined toward right center field. Base hit and one hops the fence. And Hafner into second base with a two out double.
So the Indians are not done yet. And they need one more base runner to bring the tying run to the plate. Now that fastball leaked back out over the plate. He realized as soon as he threw it. He fouled off that last 3-2 curveball. And then he let something out over the plate and Hafner made him pay. Short hop the bullpen. It'll go as a double for Hafner. The fourth double for the Indians. Kelly Shopik, 0 for 3 tonight, will be the batter. And he just missed with that ball. Now Weaver ready with the 1 0 pitch to Kelly Shopping. And a ground ball to third. Figgins will look him back, throw him out, and the game is over. So the Indians get seven hits tonight, but they are shut out. 